My name is uh, Axel Emanuelsson, and I am an uh, uh, engineer and biologist, and uh, I'm working as a consultant, uh, mainly with dam removals and uh, fish migration issues. So today I'm going to speak about a dam removal that uh, was carried out last summer in 2017, and it's uh, uh, Fortum, the power company that uh, owned the dam and who uh, who, who uh, had the project. Uh, so the agenda for today. Uh, so I will start with some background of the project. Why? Why was this dam removed? And after that, I will talk some about the removal process and uh, show pictures from uh, from before and during the removal and also afterwards. Uh, and I will show some pictures of how a lake looks after you have lowered it uh, three meters, like was the case here. And last, I will make some uh, reflections now one, one year afterwards and uh, some about what we have learned so far and what will happen next. Uh, all right, so some uh, orientation and background. We're in Hudiksvall. Uh, Akwan is here. Uh, and it's, uh, it has been used as one of many lakes for regulating uh, the flow of the river Klagelven, uh, which is this river, and it's one of the major Swedish rivers. Uh, so along with a bunch of other dams, uh, the flow was controlled, but uh, to, to really control the flow of such a big river, you need very many dams and it's a lot of work. So uh, in in the early 60s, uh, a new really big dam was uh, constructed, the Hölgjes Dam, further up in the system. Uh, and with so instead, uh, the flow was regulated with, with that dam, making these other dams uh, quite obsolete, or at least making very little difference. So, so the dam was uh, uh, about four meters high, and the level of the lake could be uh, moved three meters. So in, in comparison to, to this river, it's a very small water volume. Uh, so it has played out its role. And the interesting thing from seen from a dam removal perspective is that there are so many of these dams in Sweden, because it's not only uh, this river, Klagelven, that is uh, being regulated this way. It's uh, the same thing in, I would say, every big river. And also, this river and the, or the lake and, and the stream below uh, was pointed out as having a high potential for biological improvement. Uh, there was a stock of uh, or or tr of trout below the dam but not uh, historically it has been trout in the lake also but since the construction of the da dam in the i think it was in the 30s uh, it went away so for for the locals living nearby the return of the trout was a important thing all right so we have this dam that has played out its role and we have uh, a high gain in removing it. Uh, what led to uh, uh, the dam owner, Fortum, to decide to remove the dam and instead make it, uh, uh, to, to restore the lake as, as it was before. Uh, and it's the first, it's the first of their s regulation dams that they uh, remove, so it has been uh, kind of a a pilot project for them. So the aim of this project has been to uh, yeah, remove the migration barrier, obviously, and to uh, restore the natural hy hydraulic conditions, uh, and also to eliminate the risk of, of dam failure. So that's, uh, that's uh, a brief version of, of the background. So. Removing the dam in 
2017. Uh, so before, before we started, it looked like this. Uh, the water level in the lake is about 1 and 1.3 meters below the, the maximum level here. Uh, so we started with with lowering the lake. Uh, looks like this. So now it is uh, 1.7 meters below what it was before, and uh, about three meters below the maximum level. Uh, the only thing thing that has happened here is uh, the dam has be, uh, has been lowered, and uh, uh, and also it has been four weeks since uh, since the removal. So sediments have been able to uh, been flushed away, and the the stream has been able to to find its its former stretch. This is another picture, and uh, yeah, what can you say? It does look like a mud hole, but hopefully not for for long. So the dam itself looked like this. This is again before I jumped back to before. Uh, and after the removal, or meanwhile, it's uh, it's still in the process. It looked like this. So we wanted to remove as little as possible of the dam in order to uh, to minimize the impact on the cultural history, because that was also an important issue for the people living nearby here. So next thing, we added rock material, so gravel and rocks and blocks was added to improve the the biotope here and to restore the former uh, outlet of the lake. And when that was done, it looked like this. Uh, so here you can see the old dam walls. Uh, and here's a small bridge for, uh, for being ab able to walk past the, the stream. And that was the persons living here who constructed that. All right, so if we look at the lake, this is what it looked like before, June 2017. So earlier that sum or, or later that summer, when the water is lower, it looked like this. Uh, still no restoration has been made in the outlet. Next picture, then the restoration is uh, has been made, and uh, yeah, the restoration is complete here. But still, there's not so much growing there. So this was one year ago. Uh, so if we look how it is uh, this year, one year after, uh, the site looks like this. So now we can see that uh, the vegetation has already started to to grow here. So it's starting to get green, still not super green. And also some uh, some small sprouts of, uh, of trees have been showing up, even if no plantation has been made. Also, we had uh, trout was seen to migrate up to the lake just soon after it was removed. So that was a, a really nice, nice thing that it happened so fast. All right, so one year after the removal. So we had the summer of 2018, very dry summer, where uh, we barely had, didn't have any rain for the entire summer. And in Aquan, we had the situation that the evaporation was, was bigger than the inflow to the lake. So the, the outflow of the lake was lower, 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 and eventually it was completely dry. So it was the same situation in a lot of the streams throughout Sweden, in uh, yeah, both uh, regulated and, uh, and uh, natural, and especially in, in the very small, small ones. Uh, so, yeah, we have this really dry condition, and it's, I think it's important to keep in mind that natural brooks do dry out every now and then when it's really extreme conditions, and uh, 
restoring the, the natural conditions, of course, do sometimes lead to an increased risk of uh, them drying out. On the other hand, keeping the dam is also a risk of dry conditions if someone, for example, closes the gate, which has happened in the system before. Uh, luckily here, trout could uh, and other fauna could survive in, in pools and in the lake. So when, uh, when uh, they electrofished from the county board, that I would say Landstilsen, they, they found trout even uh, now in the fall when the water came back. Another thing that is uh, striking, I would say, or is, is that the vegetation responds so fast and also the, the trout. So we are looking forward to, uh, to continue to, to see the development here and to see, see what's what will happen and how the lake will respond and uh, monitoring is, is being done. So we uh, consider it as uh, there's good possibilities of, uh, of making more projects like this in the future uh, and removing more similar dams. All right, so thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.